Welcome to Buddha at the Gas Pump. My name is Rick Archer, and my guest this week is Eli Ruzdar, who was a guest on the show last October. And um, that interview went very well. And afterwards, she got a lot of questions from people, and she's still getting them. And so we decided to do a second interview in which Ellie de- uh, answers some of the qu- common questions she's been getting. So welcome, Ellie, and thanks for doing this again. Thank you so much, Rick, for giving me this opportunity. It's my pleasure to be here. You're welcome. <clears throat> so um, this will be a little different. I, I would suggest that people, if they wish, uh, go back and listen to the first interview before even listening to this one, because then you'll get Ellie's whole background and, and you know how she kind of came to where she is now. Uh, we're not going to go through all that again. We're just going to start discussing these questions, and I imagine we'll spend a, a very pleasant couple of hours actually <laughs> discussing these <laughs> questions. So we're going to start right in. So um, Ellie typed up the questions that she's been getting, and, and probably you've gotten many more than these, but these are representative of the most common ones, and I, they seem to be in a little bit of a logical order. So. I'll just start and we'll we'll take it from the top and spend as much time as we like discussing each one. So the first question um, someone asked is, how can I stop the intense functioning of the mind? The mind is very entertaining. It is constantly moving to the past and future. How can I live as presence? Okay. So, uh, yes. But uh, Rick, before I answer this question, Mm -hmm. I want everybody to just for a few seconds, we're going to close our eyes just for a few seconds, including yourself. (laughs) Okay. And um, I want you to take take a deep breath and feel the presence that is here right now. Strongly right here, right now. And when you're, you're listening to this quest, these questions and answers, please try to listen from this presence, the life that you are, not from the mind and this character in the mind. Because if you, if you listen it from here, from the source, it's going to hit home and it's gonna, something is going to open up. Okay, so that is the deal. Always remember yourself as this presence that you are at this moment and you listen to this message. So now we slowly open our eyes and now I'm going to listen to answer this question. Okay, okay um, about two days ago when I was preparing all these questions and all, I was sitting in my living room and all of a sudden this analogy just arise from from the depth of my heart and I just want to use this analogy so that throughout this whole entire interview we remember this analogy so because by looking at this analogy you can see this whole entire picture so beautifully okay so here it goes see the truth of the matter is very simple I as life as existence wanted to know who I am so I dressed up in this body and I hypnotized myself to be this body just a thought this is just a thought that's not reality and in this body all of a sudden I wake up to who am I to who I am And not only I recognize that I am nothing, but also (laughs) I recognize that I am everything. Now, the analogy is like this. I want you to see this body, my body, as the totality now. Okay? The totality is the body. Okay? Now, I, as the totality, pretend, pretend that I am this finger, okay? So, at this moment, I hypnotize myself to be this finger, not the totality anymore. So, the moment 
I decide to, to, to do this. Not only I am pretending to be this finger, but also this finger and this finger and this, these are all I pretend to be. Okay? Now, the moment I pretend I am this finger, I feel and I think as a finger. Yes? Okay, that's all. That's all there is. So, this, the moment this thing happened, the ignorance happens. So I am ignoring myself to be this totality and I am thinking that I am this finger. So obviously I am, the moment that happens, I am, I am looking at myself as this, okay, as this is what I am, and this person is separate from me. This finger is also thinks that I am a person. So here we go. We look at each other. Of course, I am this and you are that. Of course, this looks like we are separated. But are we separated really in reality? <laughs> so that's what it is. So now, as this finger, I see everything as separate from me. Watch. These people are away from me. Of course, this is me. This is you. Definitely we are separate. But ultimately, we are not separate. Because ultimately, this is what I am. Okay? So that is, and people, especially if the people are right now, if they want to listen to this just as a download, they really want to, I want them to see this analogy with my hands. And I always remember my hands. When I'm answering the questions, just remember the hands. So, so this is the picture now. Okay? Now, this person now, as a finger, the moment this ignorance happened, the mind starts functioning. It's looking immediately for, for the source. I am immediately, I'm looking for myself now. Who am I? This is not happening um, very obviously. It's not a question of who am I. But very, very unconsciously, very subtly, this is happening in here. So this, who am I? A search starts and the mind you, the first ref reference of you now is going to be the mind you're asking the mind who am I and the poor little mind which is confused now is now looking boom 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 let me look uh, okay I am a well I am a teacher uh, okay so that's my identity very good very good <laughs> I am now I am a father oh very nice very nice now you know I am this and I'm that and it keeps adding and then has this mental image. I am a good finger. <laughs> I am a generous finger. <laughs> I, am a, I am now, uh, you know, I am a loving finger. Unconditional love. Let's practice all this. But as a finger, I cannot see. Because I don't see the totality, I cannot have that unconditional love that I'm talking about. My vision is duality. I see this as me and this is you. There is no way when I see you, I don't pass judgment. I will, because I see myself separate. And there is no way I don't go to the mind. So the mind starts chattering, because the mind is searching now. And that's normal. That's very normal, because that is the way this mind, now this mind is, is, is now looking for itself. It's a self-seeking mind. It wants to define itself. So that's why when the people say, how can I stop the mind? You cannot stop the mind who is hypnotized, who believes that I am this finger. End of the story. This mind is not going to stop. It doesn't matter. Yes, when you meditate, of course, when you meditate and you just go silent, slowly, slowly slows down. Sometimes even it comes into the complete silence. Of course, like half an hour, you may have, nothing may come and go. But the moment you come out of the meditation, that because the character is here, there is that me character thought in here exists, that I am the finger, I am this body. So this character is going to come back and it's going to function as a, as a finger, not as a totality, as a separate individual. So stopping a mind, forget it. You cannot stop this mind until, until the, the, this hypnosis drops the moment this drop not before that the moment you recognize the truth you see the ultimate truth in other words this 
individual finger all of a sudden gets tired of this, you know, all this play. And all of a sudden, it says, you know what? This cannot be. I cannot be this finger. There is no way I'll be this. So it would curve down. It goes like this. Hmm. And it goes into this cocoon, okay? In this silence, in that stillness, all of a sudden, it would recognize there is some sort of connection. Something in here is like an awareness, okay? That's besides this finger, besides this individual. That recognition is not the ultimate freedom. If I just recognize that I, there is this awareness in here, there is this existence here, but still this character exists in this as, as this finger, but this character would recognize that this is not freedom. The freedom is when this finger would all of a sudden turns around like this and sees the totality, okay, like that. So once this sees this totality, what happens? The, the vision changes. Instead of having the vision from the finger looking at the rest, the vision is looking like this. This is how I see now. The totality is looking. Totality is seeing right now. Mm -hmm. See that? The totality is now seeing, okay, now I am not only, this is not only me, this is my finger, but also the rest of these elements are me. Yeah. So I am seeing now as, as here, as right above, above this picture. So the duality, it, drop, it drops and it becomes as unity. Hmm. Unity means I see myself as totality and everything else, every, all of this is within me. So I am the totality, including the body. This body is also in me. Okay, but I am not it. Mm -hmm. So this is the analogy. So every question that arises, I'm going to use this analogy. If you're looking at this analogy, you're looking at it from here. You're looking at the question from here, not from the individual character. Okay, so, so and, okay, the first question, the mind is not going to stop. It's going to chatter. For, this is natural. It's natural because this mind is looking for itself. So you leave it alone. It's not about the mind. It's about the, you have to realize that the, the reason this is happening because this is searching for itself. So it has to, you need to quiet down, come into this stillness so that this whole thing a little bit clears out so you can see what is going on in here. That's how it is. Yeah. Okay? I hope Good. that answer. And for your information, the moment this recognition happens, the moment you realize you are the totality, I have good news for you. This chattering, gone. Right. Disappears. Guaranteed. Promise you. Promise you. That self-seeking in the mind, gone. The, the mind is completely in here, quiet, like a servant. You give order, the mind does it. That's the end of that. The order comes from the source now, not from the character, not from the character, whatsoever. And the character dissolves in this. The moment it recognizes, the moment it sees that, this character is not going to last in here. So if you have this still a character here who sees the awareness and it goes to the mind and comes back to the here, to, wants to be a present, that character is big and clear sitting there. Okay, so that is, I just want to clarify that, that if that is your experience right now, you don't feel free because the character is functioning. I am a finger. I'm not the totality. You don't see yourself as this, as existence, as emptiness. That is, that's a conviction. It has to happen as a conviction for sure. There is no 99.9%. .9%. This is a 100% conviction. Okay, that's it. This is where I am, for sure. <clears throat> okay, good. Okay. So to make sure that uh, I and, and the listeners understand the analogy, I believe I do, but I just want to dwell on it for a bit. Um, my, uh, my desktop picture and also my screensavers are all these NASA photos of the day. So right now I'm looking at you, but I also see a galaxy in the background on my screen. 
Oh. And the reason I like that is because it reminds me of the vastness of and, you. Yeah, of, of and, you. Of really, and I, it's not. I'm, I'm not just thinking of the vastness of the universe. Whenever I look at pictures like this, I think of the vastness of intelligence, the vastness of being or of presence yes. that that in w which gives rise to all this, and in which all of this is contained, and that that's what I am. You know. Um, and so when you speak of the finger and the body, it's, as you say, an analogy. Um, the body, in this analogy, represents that the totality, the totality, totality. universal, vast, all-encompassing, great wholeness. And yes. the finger just represents the, this, this body, this individual yes. expression. Yes. Yes. And, of course, there are millions of fingers, billions of fingers yes. uh, in, in this yes. analogy because there's so many individualities, um, that so many expressions. Um, so anyway, that's, the, just, that's what you mean by that analogy. And, um, but then, of course, you said when, when the to and maybe this will be elaborated in further questions, but you said that when the totality is realized, then the chattering mind just stops. Well, but, uh, of course, that's the $64,000 question is, how is the totality realized, you know? Very good question. Uh, easy, good. Easier said than done, maybe. Um, ultimately, if I want to give you the one answer in mm. one sentence, it is the grace of the divine. Mm. But then again, God helps those who help themselves. So <laughs> we'll be Absolutely. talking about that. Absolutely. But the ultimate decision right. is I, as, a, as, a, as life, mm -hmm. as an existent, decide in right. this finger, uh -huh. I want to wake up totally. Right. In this finger, I want to be a murderer. Right. That's, that's my decision. Uh -huh. In this finger, I want to be just happy-go-lucky being. I'm happy with this. Everything is fine. Yes, I am this. No problem. Right. In this finger, I want to be a doctor, very, very famous, very knowledgeable, and all that. And I don't believe in any of that. I think <laughs> science is good. And that's, that's me again. That's what I am again. So yeah. They're all good. Mm -hmm. I mean, Rick, this is not... You know, when you see this totality, you don't. You're not gonna say, "Oh, you are a bad guy. You are the murderer. What? What did you?" It's, that's not how it's gonna be because right. this whole play is in play, mm -hmm. and there is no such thing as, "Okay, this this being now is woke up. Now I have to knock everybody's door and wake them up." It's right. not gonna be like that. It's not. Gonna, you're gonna just look at the totality as this, as this view, and then, okay, if somebody comes on your way and interested, they send me email for, fine, I take care of that. But if it's not, if somebody says, oh, I don't believe in this, this, this is not nonsense, and okay, I'm happy, leave them alone. That's mm -hmm. how this life, that's how, what, how I want to behave as that. Right. So there is no question. Good, I like that answer. Okay, okay. let's go on to number two. Okay. Um, how can I get rid of the ego? Hey, very good. How can I get rid of this character now? It's sitting here and pretends that I am this finger again. Okay? My answer to this is that when you... this is Maybe this analogy helps. The ego, this character, is just a belief. It's not real, right? It's just a belief in my head that I am this finger. Okay, so it's not a reality. So I'm not gonna go and, and put energy on some belief which is not even real. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Let's say you are in a very, very dark room which absolutely is pitch black. You don't see anything, you don't even see the body. That's darkness, okay? Now, you, have, you can do two things. One is just take a broom and go after this darkness, try to get rid of it. Uh -huh. Okay, that's how you do, people do. Try to get rid of the ego, which doesn't even exist. <clears throat> ego does not exist. It's just a thought in the head. Okay, that thought in the head makes this whole entire game play. Now, in this dark room, I can also do something else. I can touch the wall and look for the light, okay? Just the moment I turn on the light, what happened? The darkness Dark. is darkness gone, is gone. Yep. gone. So that's what I'm talking about. See, the moment this finger turns around and see the totality, mm -hmm. what happens? Automatically, 
automatically the ego drops for good mm. this path is the path of cancellation of that ego cancellation for good this ego is not going to come back and play games with you anymore so because you know who you are now you see yourself as the totality this shift this shift of the vision is the key you see again i repeat that if you have if you have some uh, uh, knowledge some uh, you know experience of the awareness in here but if this this character is still functioning in here and doesn't see itself as the totality you still feel that as as a person as an individual so you can't see the big picture okay you see you know what i'm saying so the big the moment that shift of the view happens that the shift shift means that all of a sudden i see myself as rise above this and i'm seeing this whole picture like this away from it away from it and all of a sudden i notice oh this is the <laughs> this was funny you laugh you you got to laugh for the rest of your life <laughs> what a good, you know just how could i fall in love fall in, in fall into this, something like this it's just beautiful it's just orchestrated so beautifully how did i ever see this the string as a snake yes you know yes. that analogy exactly exactly <laughs> um now do you see yourself as nothing i, I mean a, as a combination of totality expressed as this particular finger i mean you know there's no. still a, there's still a sort of a and the life of Ellie, you know, uh, oh. as and that's still a finger. It's not. It's not oh. all the fingers. But watch, yeah. look, look at, look, just look at me. You can answer the question. Watch, mm -hmm. watch the way I'm looking. This is Ellie. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is Rick. Right. Okay. Who, who, who is me? Where is me? You're, Where is me? You're I am the totality. This. Yes. Right. Always. Always. But of course, I you're the totality. You know, the, this is the totality speaking through Rick. The totality speaking through Ellie. Absolutely. Absolutely. I see both of these bodies now. These two are me. Uh -huh. Okay? There is no Rick and Ellie separate. These are like, these are just instruments. These are not really, these are vehicles. I see this, this as a vehicle. Uh -huh. This is a vehicle. And that is, that is who talking to me right now is a vehicle. There is only this existence, which I am functioning through this finger okay which is Ellie mm -hmm. and is is and talking is not a person this is not a personal anymore there is no person here okay but there is existence in here see right. that see that this is how make make this is make it so difficult this person okay in this path would recognize the truth and it would it has to say ultimately that I am that truth. It would recognize the, this emptiness, mm -hmm. existence, and it would declare, this is the last sentence that this character is gonna say. This is the last one, I am until that. it drops. And it says, I am that. This drop has to drop mm -hmm. into the ocean. If it didn't drop, if the drop is still is outside, thinking of itself as a separate from the ocean, Although it sees the ocean, but it's not one with the ocean. Do you see that? That's yeah. the problem of majority of the people I talk to. They mm -hmm. are still as a drop. The mm -hmm. drop didn't drop yet. And they, you know what they do? <laughs> when I talk to them, they, they go dance around that. Dance around that. They go in the circle. They don't want to jump into the center of the, cer the circle. They, they, go, they like to be a seeker, to be in the circumference of the circle over and over, tail chasing. And Do the they have a they, choice of dropping, or is it grace, as you said earlier? No, this is the grace. This, uh, this part, this part, nobody can help you. So the person can't just say, okay, I want to drop now. Here I go. Boom. No, no. <laughs> it has to be grace. It has to be grace. The grace decides. Yeah. The grace of the existence. Say, you know what? That's enough. Mm -hmm. I, that, I'm done. I have enough with this <laughs> game. And I am, I am not for sure. And you know what? This uh, uh, recognition of the awareness, when it happens, the life is your guru. Hmm. The life that you are, that is going to teach you how to be this, okay? It would bring you some challenges, 
over and over again so that you see am I this character now am I a finger or am I this totality mm. constantly it brings that constantly and you see now a shift happened in here it is not a functioning as a person anymore this this is totality is talking right now this is not a person but totality it, is functioning as a person or through as a, a person, person. Through a per absolutely right. but there is no person here this is this is uh, this is inert this right. is inert it is but not the, a person. but this person whom through whom totality is functioning has right. eyes ears nose absolutely. Ha has intellect mind absolutely. senses yes. now now you know and those are all uh, like tools or faculties through yes. which totality functions now yes. isn't there also uh, some uh, remnant at least of ego or eye sense which is just one of the faculties like senses like intellect like like you know like mind which kind of makes this entity of you know capable of functioning well I don't know what you mean by eye sense you have to describe that I means I am a the I'm, I'm a body again as a finger no no not that you or identify I with as, it as uh, which one? Which I are we talking about? You have to be very clear. <laughs> if you're talking about I as a totality, yes, I is a totality speaking. Mm -hmm. As a to inside, you have to know what is going on. You see, inside when you talk, although there is really not inside, you're talking about in in the core of your being. You need to know who you are. Okay. Yeah. Then in this play, in this play, of course you play. This is now. For example, let me give you a very simple example. Tomorrow is a Mother's Day. Okay, very simple. I know for a fact that I am not the mother. Right. For a fact. Okay, now, do I play now tomorrow as a role of the mother? Of course I do. Yeah. Of course. And they call me mommy. Mommy, am I answering or no? Yes, of course. It's just like a play of a, you become an actor, Rick, in, in right. a movie, right? In this movie, you are a doctor. Okay, mm -hmm. your, your name is Robert now. You have a wife and three children in this movie. And this movie runs, let's say, three years to, from the beginning to end. Okay? So in this movie, you're playing the role of this doctor. So you have to do whatever this doctor does. So when they call you Robert, you turn around, right? Okay? When, and then there's a wife in there, make believe as if she's your wife. There are children as if they are your children. That's exactly how it is. But are you going to lose your identity in this movie? No, you know you are Rick. Sure. Right? You know that this is a game. This is just a play. So you have a play identity. So there's an exactly. identity. Uh, there's an identity, but it's not ultimately real. It's, no. it's, it's just sort of like a... In Sanskrit, there's this term, lesha vidya, which means faint remains of ignorance. And it's said that, you know, you have... To, there, there's this sort of like superficial... Uh, remnant, yes, wh which which makes yeah. the living possible. You know, exactly. Other, exactly. Otherwise, you just be like. Uh. <laughs> exactly. I'm not gonna say I'm not the, this early Ruzdar, You know, date of birth. My my. I went to the driver's lesson place the other day. So they gotta take this picture, and this is what this is you what you are. This is your driver's <laughs> license. Yeah. Uh, in, so in the play. They don't in put totality play. on your driver's license. Exactly. You don't say <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it, you know that your true identity. See, that's that's why I'm saying that this this pattern is an intelligent, mm -hmm. intelligent, ready mind to know to recognize the difference between the truth, which you are, and the play and the mm -hmm. and the fiction. Mm -hmm. The mind has to recognize that and don't make, get mixed up. It's not going to say, oh, so now that I, I'm nothing, so then uh, what's going to happen? If they, somebody call me, am I, how? No. If somebody <laughs> calls you, you are Ellie. You are Rick, of course. Mm -hmm. You're not going to lose your head. You're not going to lose your mind, ladies and gentlemen. You are going to be gaining yourself as the ultimate truth, which is this, which is this. It's not this anymore. Right. For sure. Yeah. But not that that doesn't mean that I, you don't love this. this. You love this even more because this is your instrument now. This is your mm -hmm. vehicle. Through this, through this, I recognize myself right. as the ultimate truth. So I love this. And this is giving, allowing me to smell a nice, beautiful flower. That is the instrument now. I can eat a nice meal and enjoy that 
taste of that meal through this. Okay? Yeah. So I am going to love this even more, even more. But the love that I'm talking about is not a selfish, self-centered, you know, egoic, you know, character-minded kind of a love. Me, 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 me. No, that's not going to be that. It's going to be the love which I love for that body also, who's talking, same, same. It's the same love, okay? It's all embracing, welcoming, all-inclusive. Let's, let's put it this way, all-inclusive love. You see this, see, this is how you see it. You see all of them like they are you. You cannot say, oh, I like this one a bit more than that one. It's not, these are my fingers. Which is the golden I, rule, isn't it? Love your neighbor as yourself. Absolutely. I yeah, love that's, what, that's what that means. <laughs> yeah, who says that? Love your neighbor. That, that Jesus. Is, Jesus. Yeah. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. Of course. Yeah. Because his vision is this vision, not, the, not like as a character. Love your neighbors. Okay, they do that. Uh, oh, I am a nice character. I love my neighbor. I take care of my neighbor. Uh, that's the very, very superficial level. Right. If you train yourself, uh, you know, to be a nice person and unconditional loving and, you know, polishing this, this finger, you cannot, this is not the path of purifying. This is not the path of polishing yourself to become a better individual or better more, more spiritual. Like, uh, yes, better finger, better <laughs> finger. We're not talking about that. We are saying in this path, you are not a finger, period. Oh, look at that. She's, she's making a fuss. Adorable. Had to, had let, to, me see, let me see the, the, the eyes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Hey, hi, Leila. Beautiful. Leila? Leila. Leila, yeah. Leila. <laughs> oh, she was like, she's restless. She likes to sit on my lap during these interviews. That's so. beautiful. Now we're all set. Now adorable. we can settle down. <laughs> adorable. Yeah. Good. So what you were just saying is in terms of, it's really a matter of putting things in the proper perspective, proper proportion. Right. It's not that anything is lost. It's just that everything is, um, you know, relegated to its proper role. Yeah. And in, instead of the finger kind of taking over and dom, you know, being the dominant thing, the whole, the whole body, the whole totality. So instead of the individuality saying, you know, this is what I am and nothing right. more, it says I am this totality functioning through this individuality. Excellent. And through, all, and through this individuality yes. here yes. and, yes. <laughs> and yes. all of them. <laughs> the whole, all inclusive. Right. I am none of, see, at the same time, this is very paradoxic. I am, at the same time, I am nothing, mm -hmm. but yet I am everything. Right. And at this, it shifts. It just goes like at the same time, it's both. Yeah, yeah. So you're not going to renounce one one of them or or you know, group, you know, you're not going to say I'm only nothingness. Right. It's not that you're not going to stuck in there. Mm -hmm. You know, you say I am everythingness. Everything I see is that's what I am. That right. body is the same. This is the same. This is oneness is talking. Mm -hmm. There is no two people right now talking right. interacting at all. I don't see it like that at all. Good. Let's go on to question 3. Um, is there any technique to be more present and have a peaceful life? How you can answer that, uh, uh, Rick? What technique are we talking about? If you think you are a character again, yes, you have to you know, use all these techniques. How can I calm myself down? How can I bring myself to the present? But this, as long as you are this character in, as a finger, you're not going to find, peace never is going to find you. Peace never gonna find you because you think you are this finger. So even though you go and to the seminars, they teach you how to breathe and how to meditate and how, how to bring yourself to the present, you can't bring yourself to the present because you as a person are searching outside for, for, to find yourself. Although this, there are techniques that have you search inside. I mean, like the very beginning of this even, interview, you, you wanted us to close our eyes and take a deep breath and kind of recognize yes, the presence. And, exactly. That's the only way. When, uh, the real way is just to just curve back, curve right. back inside and, and see what's going on in here. That mm -hmm. is the real search. That's the true search. Yeah. Okay? Other than that, I mean, this character is not going to find peace. It cannot be in the present moment. You know, try that. I mean, people say, oh, I try to come to the prison. A few minutes I'm here, then I go back. Because the character 
is not to this present moment to the character who is searching it's death it doesn't want that it do doesn't want to stay here this is too boring this presence is too boring for the character but once the character drops this is absolute absolute joy absolute ecstasy absolute peace and fulfillment at every single breath every breath is this yeah and this is absolutely complete it's like you know you don't have to be anywhere nothing has to happen from outside i am this but and that's what this, that's once the character has dropped but you know the yeah. for the vast majority of people the character hasn't dropped so the question was is there some technique to drop no, it you know or i to, cannot I, and you, well you say you know curve back yes just curve back curve yeah. back and there are effective techniques which can actually be taught, uh, which can facilitate that curving back. Curving back to what? To do what? To not to just, oh, I just want to curve back and relax and I see what happened. That's not what I'm talking about. This path is about when you curve back, you, when you quiet down, Coming that to silence, yes, the silence is talking to you. Right. The silence is pointing. See, the si when you go curve back like that, this silence is talking to you to, so you can see all of a sudden the truth like this mm -hmm. okay sure that is silence is pointing towards the truth that you are yeah and in that silence the truth awakens to itself it wakes up okay not in the middle of all these mental activities necessarily no. majority I'm, I'm not talking about exceptions I mean every teachings that we see that like right now if it's, you're talking about Buddhism, Zen, even Sufism, there is this one common denominator in all of them. And what is that? Silence. Mm -hmm. Just go to the silence. Yeah. I am not against going to the sad signs and teachers and talking and the, the bo reading books and internet. There's nothing wrong with that. But ultimately, if you have done all of them and this thing didn't work, that is because you as a character does not know this silence very well does not honor this silence very well and do not want to jump into that that's that's the bottom line so the silence that's the key now how you want to do it i don't there's so many methods for me sure. it's just just quiet down stay and be be allow every thought comes in and out you don't have to stop it you can stop it I just told you, the mind does not stop until you know who you are. So you allow this come and go, come, emotions come and go in that presence that you are, that the truth that you are. And, and, and slowly, slowly, you, you notice that you're just me. And, in the, and some people, you know, that's very really un unbelievable things they say to me. They say, oh, I have been teaching meditation for many, many years, and they are still stuck. They don't know who they are. They call me and we talk. I said, okay, from, for the next two weeks, all I'm asking you to do, just close your eyes and be. Just be. They're sending me back an email. I have a hard time to be. <laughs> I just cannot be. <laughs> How could you not be? <laughs> Try it. Yeah. Try to cancel this being. See if you can. You know, can so... It's, these are the mind. These are the characters talking. The character said, mm -hmm. I cannot just be. I mean, every time I feel like I'm being, it is, I get anxiety. So <laughs> to me, that's just like, you know, I answer them nicely, lovingly. But they try to understand who is talking. This is the character is talking. I can't be. What is that? Mm. You know, that is how you want to be in a circle. You want to be a seeker because you want to be keep seeking and seeking. The, this path is gone. Once you see the ultimate truth, the <laughs> seeking stops for good. And all these practices, how to I be present and how to not to think and how these are all drops. No practice, no nothing, no search, everything you are just just that. And you just live like that. That's why we call this liberation. Liberation yeah. doesn't mean I, I know that I'm awareness, but every moment I have to remember myself as that. No. No. This is not based on the memory base. It's not memory-based. 
if you don't have to remember who you are, you are that. That True. is what you are. Yeah, and yeah, very, very much so. And and you're not going to lose it by forgetting to think about it or any such thing. It's it's in your bones. You know, it's it's just exactly. it's stabilized. Because, yes, but Rick, because truth knows itself. Right, right. Once it recognizes itself, how could you lose yourself? I mean, that's to me just absurd. Right, but again, you're sort of speaking of the perspective from the destination, and and there are people obviously who are not there who are saying, well, what you know, is there some technique or something? And as you said, Sufism, Buddhism, Hinduism, right. all, all these isms, uh, and have techniques that can be helpful. And and even you, you know, you mentioned going to satsangs. I mean, a lot of times, a lot of times people go to satsangs, and it's all just on the mental level. But some sometimes people really awaken in these satsangs because there's a sort of a resonance that takes Absolutely. place yes. with the silence of. Of the of the, the teacher and it, it enables the other people to attune to that level of silence or some degree of it and then they they do you know it does facilitate an awakening for many people absolutely so I, you know, so I wouldn't reject no, that either no there is nothing no. to reject what right. I'm saying that you know I didn't go to any satsangs I right. don't have any teachers I just my way was just silence going yeah. within okay. These satsangs are all good, especially if your mind is ready, if this character is ready to see the truth, of course, yeah. of course, the moment it sees, it, you know, people see, sit next to me, all of a sudden I see that they just, they lose them, just they lose, they collapse. Right. I see them, they collapse. That means the character collapses. Mm -hmm. It just becomes this. They become this, you know, and then the, 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 this is talking. That's, right. that's how it happens, of course. But... The, all, to me, uh, the, the way I experienced myself in this body was I needed, this body needed to be quiet. Yeah. This body has to be still because ultimately you need to jump into this stillness that you are. Yeah, you would lie there for three hours and not move a muscle. And, and, exactly. You know, just, yeah, That's people can hear that in the first interview we discussed yes, that. Yeah. Yes, yes, you need yeah. that. Is th that I'm not saying this was helping me to just recognize the in, the silence that is here is pointing into this ultimate truth that is here. In, and I told you I had in that interview I had these experiences of a love affair. I was thinking I am a character and I'm going this inside. Okay, and there was a love affair here, and I thought there is two. There is this me, and there is the totality. See, and then this is the love affair we're having. <laughs> but in one of these love affairs, one of them, this character dropped. Mm. It just burned out. Mm. So once it came out, it was only this. Mm. Okay, but this awareness arise, just woke up, but it was still a duality. I still was seeing myself for some reason in this body, very attached to the body at the beginning. But after a while, you know, you know, the moment you re this recognition happened, the attention of the body automatically goes back to this, the, to the source. I don't know for some automatic. This is just effortlessly, mm -hmm. effortlessly. This attention instead of going out, it, it seems like it discovered something. It comes back all of a sudden here, okay, and then. Once it's here, it just, that peace and everything was felt. And in one of those walking that I was doing, all of a sudden I saw everything is in me. Hmm. Which, you know, it started a little bit, shade, you know, just on and off, on and off. And now, of course, yeah, of course, that eyes opens up wide open. Once that eyes open up, this eye belongs to the, belongs to the finger, closes up. It closes up. It's not going to stay open again. Like that, you know, that vision never changes, ever, ever. You see people inside of you. They're just pay attention. I take people to the walk meditation. I ask them to close their eyes. I hold their hands. I ask them to walk and see: Are you walking, or the body is walking in you? Mm -hmm. Because you are stillness. You are still. The body is moving in you. That's it for sure. You experience that. This is direct experience. This is not something you believe from me. Don't believe anything that I'm saying. You need to experience all of that. This vision I'm talking about, that has to happen in, in you. You have to, That eye has to open to see the totality like this, not as a finger. You don't see yourself as a finger, other people as a finger. 
Mm-hmm. Definitely, that's for sure. But as you say, even in your own case, it, it took time, you know, and there were degrees yes. of degrees of sort of clarity and and stabilization and integration, and you know, and it came and at, at times it was intermittent, and then it became yes. more more stable. So so people shouldn't feel like if it's not so instantly and completely what you're describing for them that yes. they're doing something wrong, you know, just yes. sort of, you know, be patient and and can carry on and and it will mature. Absolutely, and there is nothing wrong. It's, there's no wrongdoing here. There's right. no right. Whatever body this this is functioning in, each body is different. So mm-hmm. it, it doesn't the, the the life that I am. Okay, the, I don't like copies. I like to, in each body. I like to be awakened differently. Mm-hmm. That's how I see. It. <laughs> That's that great. In Ellie is different. In I don't want copies. No. I don't want same exact thing happen. Seven billion people here, in some bodies. I don't want to even wake up. On this one, I don't want to wake up. Mm-hmm. I want to just stay like that. What's yeah. wrong with that? And this one, I want to be a cat. And this one, I exactly. want to be a, a, a crab or a snail or a exactly. whatever. <laughs> exactly. And you enjoy yeah. yourself as, 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 as this. Look at this miracle, Rick. Mm-hmm. Everything is miracle. Yeah. I mean, I see sometimes these dog shows. Look at the different variety of dogs. Yeah, yeah. And sizes and or, their attitude. They even talk about their attitude. They say this particular dog has this particular character. Mm-hmm. You know, that's amazing. I know it's marvelous <laughs> the creativity of of you know the, the of God or intelligence. Or, yeah. Oh, which is you. We don't yeah. forget it's you. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what you are. <laughs> Just okay. claim it, Rick. Claim yeah. it. We need to claim that. We need to claim that. You need to know that you are that. You are not apart from that. You are it. Yes, but there's. It's not just a matter of saying that. No, you know? no, you, no. You, cause it's like say it's like a poor man saying, "Okay, I'm the king," you know, or "I'm the president of the United States." Oh. Here, you know, I mean, there are people on the street who are delusional who are like that. <laughs> no, it's not. This is but not. It's a matter of really genuinely living it. Living it, yeah, absolutely. And you, don't, and and you don't necessarily live it just by saying. I am the totality. It has to be. There has to be some reality to that. And feel. You feel every breath. Yes. You feel that. You feel it. You feel mm-hmm. that I am this expansion. Right. No more this for a fact. No. Right. More. I mean that has to be. And then shows. You know that the way you look, mm-hmm. is your your eyes. The way you look at the people, is coming from the source. It's yep. not coming from the character anymore. There is no character, mm-hmm. because there is no character. Never been. <laughs> the character never existed. I, I'm just going to repeat that many, many times. People do not go and pay attention to the character and try to kill it and try to get rid of it. And n- d- don't do that. That just, is another trap. Just turn on the light switch. Turn on the light switch. And automatically, automatically, that goes away mm-hmm. by itself, effortlessly. Good. Let's go on to the next question, which actually pertains to this. Um, I know that I am awareness, but I still feel inadequate, limited, and unhappy. I don't feel that I am free yet. What is wrong with this picture? Yes, well, we, did, we just discussed that. As long as you think that you are a finger and you are not the totality, you feel limited, mm-hmm. unhappy, and miserable. This is miserable. I, I mean, how can I be this finger? My goodness. How can, how can you be this? Ask yourself, is that possible? At age six, I saw that. I saw that I am not, oh my God, this is not, that doesn't make sense to me at all. I was not identified. And this is the same eyes. It's not the different eyes. But at the moment when I was experiencing that, it was very scary to me because I didn't know who I was. Now I see it again, the same eyes looking, but this eyes now is, although I don't know who I am, this is not, see, this truth is not, it's a mystery. You're not gonna, you cannot define who you are. Okay, this is not definable. You're undefined. In but words. You, exactly. I cannot say one thing about this. Mm-hmm. I cannot describe this. I cannot, but you can be it. Right. You can fully be it. No mm-hmm. doubt, without any doubt, you need to claim this conviction. Yeah. Bottom line is conviction. You are still thinking unhappy and, and all that because you think is still you are your person. 
So yeah, when the person says, then I know I am awareness, but I'm miserable. I mean, that, that knowledge of awareness must be somewhat just conceptual and not actually living it. Otherwise, some of, the, some of the feelings, some, some, some of the, mixture. Yeah, there's some exactly mixture in there. Exactly, mixture. Yeah. I, felt, I work with people with Skype, okay? And I was working with some guy who has been in Zen monastery for all his life, mm -hmm. all his life. And he called me and he says, look, I don't know who I am. Just help me out. So we did this walking meditation together, okay? Just walking together, over Skype. step by step, over the Skype. And I do that all the time. I <laughs> do, do that do all the time. <laughs> don't they have and to sit at their computer? Step, yes, and then the guy was just, we were going, that's how I do it. That's how my retreats are right now, pretty uh, much through Skype and if people can come in. And we did a step by step. I don't tell you who you are. Mm -hmm. You tell me when we go down together, like, a, like scuba diving together, I, I be with you like a coach, not as a guru. Not as someone who want to pour information to your head. Oh, you are consciousness, you are awareness, you are this and that. That's not my style. I am going to take you there. We go together. And we go deep down. And I'm going to ask you the question. Especially for the people who have done meditation. They are familiar with this area. So they know. They, are, they trust this. So I ask you the question. I ask you. You see there's a stillness and there is a truth in here which is always here. Something that is, is never come and go. Okay? It's also aware, it's aware of this emptiness, of this silence also. Now tell me who you are. So he's gonna, he's, he noticed that, he recognized that completely. Completely he recognized the truth. Awakened. And he started laughing. He started laughing, laughing, laughing. And then he says, yes, absolutely. There is no question about that. This is what, and I ask him many, many times, just, con are you this? Tell me this. Tell me you are, are you this? Are you this? So he said that many times. Yes, I am this. I am this. So then about a month later, he calls me. Okay. He said, my mind went crazy. I was, I couldn't even meditate. I was sick the next day. My mind was going crazy. Of course, this feels like death to the mind. This is like a suicide. I'm telling you, it's like suicide. So it's to rebelling. the character. Yes, the character, because the character doesn't want to die. This, right. to the, this is, is like, oh my God, I am not, I am nothing. What is that? But it, this feeling of death is just. It's very strong for some of these characters. They they rather to be this miserable little finger. <laughs> Let's put it this way. Yeah. They rather, oh, no, 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 no. This is too much for me. I want, and so many people, when I ask them, are you ready to die? Are you ready to die to this you character and your life? Honestly, believe me, I get emails that they said, no, I'm not ready. Hmm. I'm not ready. So then it, it's in readiness. You have That mind has to be ready, mature. Mm -hmm. Mature leads to level of maturity. You say, it says that you know what? I deserve this. I, I and this is it. This is that's that's what I am. That's the last thing that this this character is gonna say. The last yeah, that's a good point about maturity and about readiness. Um, you you may have heard of Shankara. He was the founder of uh, Advaita Vedanta, and um, you know he talks about stages of of development that people undergo, may undergo or even practices they may do before actually being worthy of or ready to actually have the final realization and he said it, it may involve you know selfless service or meditation or different things and it sort of cultures and refines the the whole structure to the point to the point where realization can really dawn and you know some people don't like that kind of talk in in the non-dual circles but the founder of non-duality talked that way. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Let me talk about this maturity. I give a simple example to the people. Uh, Rick, if there is a two-year-old boy, let's say, sitting here, and in one hand I have a half a million dollar diamond, mm -hmm. and in another hand I have an ice cream cone. <laughs> Which one he's got? Cone. Absolutely. Sure. So he's, that's his maturity, right? Yeah. But the same boy at age 25, the same deal. Right. Which one he's going to pick? Yeah take the diamond, diamond. because yeah. he now he sees that the maturity he sees that diamond as an right. as a valuable thing yeah. although the ice cream is very you know tempting 
it's very tempting <laughs> to, you know, but you know that that's the value, correct? Yeah, you can buy Same a lot of ice cream with that diamond. Exactly. <laughs> very good. <laughs> very good. Very good. So that's, that's, the mental, that's the maturity I'm talking about. The maturity of the mind is that when we go together in this, you know, this walking meditation, when you see the truth, mm -hmm. your mind, this character, has to be ready to say yes to this. Sure. Absolutely, that's what I am. Absolutely, that is what I am. Although it still sees the duality, it doesn't matter. You, you trust this. You need to trust this. Although this is not a tangible thing, this is not a thing to hold on, and it's like a free fall. It looks like a free fall. It's like a death. But death, this death has to happen to this character. Okay, this character cannot be here and also identify and recognize some awareness is here. It's not going to work. Okay, this character has to die into this so that it would see the, itself as a totality. So the character dissolves right. in this. So I really want you to remember everyone this analogy I gave you and try to do it yourself when you, you know, when you're listening to this. Just, just see what it, 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 exactly this is the vision. This is the vision. Reality vision is like this. So your vision is going to change for good. For good. So that's how you look at everything. Good. Let's go on to the next one. Um, here's another one that starts with the same phrase. I know that I am awareness. That's the way the previous question started. This moment. But when I go to the mind and in, the, in relationships... Uh -huh. I lose it. How can I remember it all the time and not okay. lose it? So this, who is talking now? The character is talking again. Mm -hmm. The character yeah, the, thinks... The character is thinking, how, how can I, the character, I, yes. hang on to this? Exactly. Character is still here. Recognize some, there are some awareness here, right? In the moment, I, yes, I feel it. This is aware. But then when I go, I go to the mind, okay? So there is a character in the middle. It goes to the mind and comes back. So you, have, you need to close your eyes and check. Is this character exist? The attention goes to the mind. The, the mind arises from this. From, from this that where you are, the mind, the, the mind, mental activity arises from you. But you don't go anywhere. Where are you going? You are here, folks. You do not go anywhere. The attention of the body may go to, to the mind and comes back. There is nothing wrong with that. You know, once you know yourself, let's put it this way. Once you know yourself, any thought is welcome. As long as you know who you are. Any emotion, any emotion is welcome. I suppose people might say, well, yeah, but it's easy for me to remember who I am when I'm walking on the beach or, you know, just sort of meditating and taking it easy. That, then there, that presence is lively. But, boy, when I go to work and my boss starts yelling at me or when my kids start doing this or my wife starts doing that, then I lose it. You know, so it can't, I can't, it's not maintained under trying circumstances. That is, again, because there's a character still there. The mm -hmm. character has to remember that I am awareness. So this how does the not, character remember that in the midst of Times Square, in the midst of a difficult situation? Um, is, is there a way to remember it, or is it either it's, it's, it's there to whatever extent it's really there, and it's, 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 it's remembered or it isn't spontaneously? It is there always. Yeah. Wait, you cannot... But, but, but see, consciously? Can, yeah, yeah, absolutely, because that's you. Because the, ca the, act, the, the truth is you. You and the truth are one. How could you lose yourself? Try it. But obviously, you know, many people are very overshadowed. You know, they do crazy things. They commit crimes. They beat yes. others and so on. Uh, uh, they don't seem to be remembering it under those Yes, absolutely. Because they know that because they think that I am this character. This right. is what I am. This is what I think I am. This is what I... And I have a mental belief about myself. I have mm -hmm. this thing about in my head that who am I about as a character yeah. and I see you as a character and I have a mental belief about you mm -hmm. and when I kill you I'm not killing really you I'm killing you that mental character that I think you are correct so yeah. that killing is going to happen now when I'm looking at this as this awareness as, as this existence is this is this being who killed the other one ha has to be bl blamed at all is there any blame here? This doesn't know who he is. 
He sure. thinks he's a finger. He thinks he's a character. So where is the blame? How can yeah. I do this? Forgive it's them, ignorant. Father. They know not what they do. Because, but, yeah, because the ignorance is right now is in, in functioning. He's ignorant. He's but what ignorant. we're talking about is people whose ignorance seems to be intermittent. You know, people who are maybe seekers and they feel that, you know, and they find that sometimes they recognize totality and then other times they lose it. And, and the, per, the questioner is saying, well, how can I stabilize it so it's not, so it's not lost? Well, that, uh, you know, honestly, there is no practice here because I, can't, I know for a fact when this thing, the, 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 when the drop drops, let's put it this way, this, all of these practices are gone. So it comes back to grace. That's exactly true. So it, there is no practice. That's, that's why we call it liberation. Mm -hmm. Liberation from what? From all these practices. Oh, I have to practice. I have to be here. I have to remember this awareness. I'm, I have to remember. That's, that's still is not the drop didn't drop. But honest, can, you have to be can, honest until the drop has dropped, can practices be helpful? I mean, you have your walking thing that you teach, for instance. I mean, um, is there something that it, it's like they say it takes a thorn to remove a thorn, you know? And so in, until the thorn is removed, maybe you need a thorn. <laughs> absolutely. Once you recognize the awareness, tr the attention, try the try. That's maybe only the practice. Bring the attention back to the, to the source. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. Just w see what you saw in the meditation. Let's say we do together a walking meditation or anything, just, just walking, closing the eyes. You recognize the truth, okay? So you saw that. Just make sure that, you know, like that diamond I just talked to you, mm -hmm. make sure that is the rec you recognize the truth as the diamond because the truth is very simple. Your mind, if it's not ready, it's, it's going to say, that's not it. Okay, it so has, you're so you're saying like until you know yourself as source, do by whatever means works for you, learn to bring bring yourself bring your attention back to source if exactly. it seems to have been cast off and right. seems to have if been you lost. can yes and, yeah, and not as a very very um, difficult and um, you know hard yeah don't, don't strain and struggle right. right not don't struggle do not right. struggle you have to see the truth as a as a valuable thing you have to value this what is. Mm -hmm. You know, the mind has to recognize that, that although this is not nothing, but this is not a nothing. Right. This is not a nothing. This is everything. See, this mind has to be ready for it. If the mind is not ready, no matter how much uh, interaction I give it to you, I, that's why I ask the people, are you ready to die? Are you ready to die for this truth? <clears throat> and if they say yes, I have to ask them again and again to make sure this person is not, uh, I just want to get some taste of it. This is like, you know, I was talking to someone two days ago, actually. This gentleman, he's, uh, he was uh, calling from California. Have you seen, if you're sitting in the beach, uh, you know, and then you see different people going into the water, you know, especially say in Hawaii, I, I go visit my family and all. And there are some people, you see them, they just take off their, sh their clothes and they just run and then jump into the water. Right. You see that? That is the attitude. Other people stick fact, their toe in. Yes. Some people, <laughs> they stick their toe. And, oh, this is too cold for me. Now I have to come back. Now I have to go sit back again. Now I have to come <laughs> back again. Now some people, and then now I go halfway, you know. That is the attitude of the, of the ego. That's yeah. the attitude, the character. I want, the ca in this path, your attitude has to be just jump. Well, the funny thing here is, though, you know, like earlier you were saying, well, you know, as a totality, I see this, this finger wants to be asleep. This finger wants to be a murderer. This finger wants to, you know, be a saint. This finger wants to be a doctor. And so there's a kind of a paradox here, because on the one hand, you're saying that totality just enjoys all this variety, and, yes. and some, some people are thick-headed and some are not. Yes. Uh, but on the other hand, you're saying, well, if, if you're... I, I guess when you say this, you're speaking to the fingers that have kind of on the verge of waking up. Exactly, and, and, exactly. And, and maybe there, you know, part of the deal would be to actually have a little bit of choice as, yeah. as to one's attitude, one's willingness, one's, one's sincerity, one's readiness. One can kind of put some attention on being more uh, receptive. Exactly. We are not talking about the, those other people that they want to be the, just like that. They want to be this finger for the rest of their lives. That's right. okay. We are, I'm not even talking. You see, this is a spectrum. 
this right, the way right. that these fingers form. Imagine this one extreme extreme. Someone says, "I am absolutely this body. This is me. This is this is the reality." That's yeah. It. When the body oh. dies, that's the end of it. Exactly. That's it. Or yeah. or even now, even now. I, yes, I believe in a God. There's a creation. I am separated. I want to be one. These they, these are the same category again. Right. They are starting here, but then there are some group of people that are in the middle. They say, "Oh, you know, I'm happy with this body. You know, I'm. This is easy. This is not. I listen to the music. I go for a walk. Okay, fine. That's that's." You. But then there is this one category that they know something is not. This cannot be it. Right. I cannot be this finger. This is the group I'm talking about now. Yeah. I'm talking and, to that group. Only. And those are the people who contact you, and those probably, probably by and large are the people who would actually be listening to this. To Absolutely. Take yeah. I'm talking about this group that they say I am seeker. I have been doing this for a long time. Guys ca calling me, I, I've been in, th in this path for 25 years. I have done all these meditation, yogas, and what ha what's wrong with this? What's yeah. wrong? They keep saying that but because they don't know that, th first of all, recognition has to be correct recognition. Because some people think that, oh, this is space of emptiness and silence, and that, it, th yeah, like that emptiness, like a death emptiness, that is what I am. It's like a black hole. Mm. That's not a black hole. <laughs> if you meditate, you know this is not empty this is full full yeah full so, th so th because according to the mind mind thinks this is oh my god i'm going to become nothing what happened i'm going to die that is the mind talking but if, that's why i'd say to people if you have been meditating if you, your mind is familiar with this space and is comfortable with this feels home feels home trust that because ultimately, this mind character has to dive into this. Isn't that so? Right. Ultimately, it has to say, this is me, yes. It has to say yes to this. So if this mind never practiced any kind of a silence, it has been all over the place. If you do this walking meditation, this mind says, I'm not comfortable here. I have to get out of here. Hmm. You know, I see people at the beginning, they say, well, when I close my eyes, I feel like I'm suffocating. Hmm. Yes, of Cause, course. Because they're is, just so unaccustomed to doing that. Yes, they are unaccustomed. They don't know what is facing. But slowly, slowly, you get the mind gets used to it. The mind sees this. Okay, no, this is although it's emptiness, but it's not really. This is really home, and this is really home. Mind have to say this is home until ultimately mind says, "I am home." Mm. Not I am at home. Right, I am that. I am home. That's Aham. different. Aham Brahmasmi. Which is, I am that. I, I am, am Brahman. That. I am that. Ulti that's the ultimate thing. That's that's the conviction. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Let's go on to the next question. Each one of these questions is somewhat similar to the others, but each one is bringing out a different flavor. I, um, so the next question is: I want to get closer to God, pray every day to be a better individual, find my mission, and have a positive effect in the world. How does the path of self-realization help me? Very good question. See, this is a real um, character. Now, it's a very innocent, very innocent. And this character believes that I am this finger, mm -hmm. but I'm looking for God. Okay? So mm -hmm. I want to know how this path is going to help me. This character, it has a strong, already strong belief now that I am definitely separate, separated from the source. The source is one, I am separate. So it doesn't see, see, this, this finger does not see any connection whatsoever. It's like and the person is asking, how can I be a better finger? I want to be a really positive, I want to be a positive finger. Yes, <laughs> I want to be a positive finger. I want to, and there is no service. You know, once you recognize, see, that, see, look at the totality, right? What is the mission of every finger? The f fingers, they don't have really mission. The fingers have to work together for the totality. The totality decides what is going on the dance is in the hands of the totality so not individuality of of every finger anymore so if your individual wants to have a mission what kind of a mission this finger can have all my life what kind of a mission this finger did have nothing there is no mission so in this path the the totality is functioning as one through every single individuals so you are not separate entity to have a mission. So try to become a better person, more purified, and none of that. Now, in this path, to my friends, I'm telling you, I dare you 
at the beginning of this path, drop your belief. Drop it. I dare you. Once you know the truth, whatever is right, it comes to you. Mm-hmm. So you see that Jesus says all oh, beautiful you know, quotes you hear here and there. And you see, oh my God, that, yes, that is from the source. This message is from the source. Absolute. So let's take some practical examples. I mean, mm-hmm. some people do have a very definite calling. Some people are excellent musicians or they, are, they feel a call to be a doctor or yep. to be a politician or to, you know, to, to serve in some way. They have a, a desire to do that. And um, very often it doesn't pay very much. They, they, they might just volunteer their time. They want to help animals you know, mm-hmm. from being mm-hmm. abused or whatever. Um, so you know, the question is, um, are you saying that they need to drop that, or no. because because they're asking, would self-realization actually help me be a better musician, okay. better right. doctor, better See, humanitarian? Look, look at the picture again. Mm-hmm. This wants to be, be musician. Good, good for him. Because I, as a totality, want to be a musician here. Mm-hmm. So I would do my very best in there. Right. So I'm gonna perform as with heart. Mm-hmm. I play with my heart, not with my mind. I right. play like there is nobody around me. Yeah, so you, if you're saying if you know yourself to be the totality, then you can be a much better violinist or a much better, you know, cellist or whatever. I don't even call it better. I want to say it. Everything comes from this, from from the heart. Everything. You're playing, yeah, you're playing from source rather yes, than like rather cooking. than just right. It's like like cooking. If you're cooking from the heart, the heart is the, the source is cooking. Mm-hmm. I when I cook, I don't taste the food. It, it just the, the hands knows this this knows. Uh, and when you taste the food, there is enough seasoning. Right. Promise you. Yeah. That's cooking from the heart. Cooking from the mind, I have to measure everything. I take this measurement, okay, this much salt, this much, you know, this and that. That's not what, you know, we're talking about a little bit, a little bit higher, um, um. big picture we're talking about. So you can be anything you want, there's no question. But that's how the divine wants to be. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you if if you know who you are that mean instrument that you're playing is is not a character playing characters plays for to impress other people right. character plays for the money mm. okay but if you love to play this you play it as as the source and that's why we have all these genius musicians or they it, when they're in the stage the source is playing fully yeah, there's there's even athletes like that, you know, basketball players. Michael yes. Jordan, when he was really playing well, he was playing from source. <laughs> Absolutely, everybody. You know, once you're in a prison playing, the character dis- dissolves. Mm-hmm. You got to believe me. When you're intense, when functioning something that you love, yeah. the character is not there. And that's why you see these beautiful paintings. Why are these paintings mil- worth millions of dollars? Because that the source made draw that. Mm-hmm. The source drew all of that. So there is a difference. That's why that, that, that picture, Mona Lisa, that smile, worth, it's worthless. I mean, priceless, I'm saying. Right, right, <laughs> priceless. priceless, you mean, yeah. But priceless, because that is smile. What is that smile? What that is smile talks to you. Hmm. That is smile is a content smile. That is smile says, to, I know who I am. And I, I am I am this. And that is smile is a smile of the final. Final. That's it. I am that. That's why that it was worth million. I went to France, I saw this uh, his Mona that Lisa. the guards all around that. Guys all standing. Mm-hmm. And not only just covered up, but the guys are right around that. It, it's not the value of this the thing. It's that message that comes out of it it's so alive it, that message is all just like the Rumi's um, poetry mm-hmm. it's alive that's not a dead thing on it on a paper you know so good yeah um, the next two questions are similar and we've actually sort of covered this point so okay. we don't have to go on too long but the, okay. it's basically the question of you know having profound experience like the experience of totality and then losing it again and, and then right. another another person asks well once you're awakened can you lose it okay the experiences i i just want to emphasize do not just chase experiences 
okay because the ultimate truth is right here okay the experience happens in you and and moves out all right but there is something here that doesn't come and go that is what you have to recognize and that is what you have to fall in love with not the experience because i personally it was trapped with this experience as a person for two and a half years just going down here have a love affair going down here have a love affair and then that, losing it and lose well when you come out of the meditation you're you're just a normal individual again person right. So, so back and forth. experience is not is going to help you. The experience, and especially there are some teachers I see people say, "Oh, this teacher had this, such and such experience." And th that, if somebody constantly emphasizing on experiences, this person, this this character is still there, is so proud of his her, or his experiences and trying to show off these experiences. Okay, this character once the character dies you're not going to inter you're not going to be interested in experiences anymore because this path is not about experience any kind of experience this right. path about is about who am i as this and that is fulfilling is satisfying in every breath every breath you are the joy of it is just so here so is who i am as this can that be lost? Can that come no, and go? Or could there be a phase where I know I, I am this and then, oh, I forgot it again? No, or this, because this is not or Once it's known, it's known. Yes, once it's known, it's known. Once this finger turns around and see the source, mm -hmm. see it for itself, okay? That hypnosis drops. I mean, completely drops, completely. It's not going to come back and say, oh, I am a person again. It's going to act as if as if see this is body is now acting as if there is this Ellie as if she's married as if she is has the children but is that true is that really true ultimately no my son is I, I mentioned last in, in the last interview he knows the source he, he talks to me from the source last year we were sitting in the backyard I was just talking to him interacting from the source you know he's just dancing around I asked him this one question I said um, I'm going to ask you this question I want you to answer from the source. Am I really your mother? And he smiled. First he smiled. And then he looked at my eyes. Very, very straight, straightforward. With that smile, he said, no. Mm -hmm. That is true. That is true. He's talking from the source. Of course I'm not your mother. Oh my goodness, of course, of course, you, this has to be so there in your heart. You have to know that you are not a mother, for sure. Or he, he maybe could have said, I am mothers, I am sons, I am no, daughters. No, that's, I the am... Mind, that's the mind he talked. That's the mind. He talked to me from the source, mm -hmm. from the source. You are not my mother. Well, couldn't source say that though? Couldn't source say? No, no, the I, mind... I, no, the mind says that because I don't know who at the presence I don't I am I don't have any identity. Mm -hmm. Zero identity. I don't I don't see myself as a thing. I see. I, I am see. this space. Everything arises from the space, comes out. So right. this is my identity. So mm -hmm. that's what he's talking about. He's the, he is as this, as as this, as a vision. Yeah. It's vision. like saying is electricity a lamp? Is electricity a refrigerator? Is electricity uh you know uh a light bulb? No, electricity is electricity. Those, all those other things are just ways that electricity is channeled or expressed. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any strong emotions, sadness, anger, after liberation? Very good question. Uh, any emotion and feelings and everything can arise because this body is conditioned. This body is a, has a physiology, has a memory, and everything it can have it can comes out. For example, this past few years, I lost a couple of very very good friends, you know that I know, and when I heard the news, let me tell you how this body was functioning. The tears was coming down, pouring, pouring. But deep here, there was this absolute 
peace and joy which they these two energies they combine together is like a sweet and sour mm. and it was delicious it was not it was not an energy that takes me off of this what I am right. it just didn't throw me off it was right here playing dancing it, this energy was dancing really so yes the sadness arises anything can arise and anger can arise anything can any because this body's condition is interacting but as long as you know who you are as an ultimate truth that's you're not going to identify with that you know if you are this finger you definitely identify with that emotion that there oh i am this anger but when i know this is what i am and this is the play is playing so i don't take this seriously now okay the two friends are gone, but where are they? Where are they, really? <laughs> where are they? The body drops, but am I going to drop? You have to know that. That has to know. You not to know that you don't go anywhere. Right. For sure. The body, of course. Every moment. Every moment. But are you going anywhere? So, what? yes, yes, in the play, the, 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 the you know, you can have uh, anything. Any emotion can arise. But in reality, you know what is going on in the big picture. You see the big picture now. Not just me as a person. Okay, good. How is life after liberation? Okay. How do I live the truth? Okay. The same way you lived as an ignorant. As an ignorant, how did you pretend? You know, you pretended all your life to be an ignorant. You ignored who you are as an, as an ultimate truth you, you, you pretended to be a, a finger that takes so much energy wasn't it it was a struggle okay after liberation what really living the truth the truth is living and this is effortless mm. absolute effortless and in every experience that you have interaction the truth reveals itself more and more more and more you recognize that this that this is what i am this is what i am of course of course this is what i am you know Does you're not going to identify anymore with the role all of a sudden oh i am the mother i have to worry about this child and what happened to her or his that's that's going to go the fear is going to go of course you're not going to have there's this future what's going to happen to me kind of a thing there is no this little me that a oh, poor little me I have to take care of, you know that this is what you are. <laughs> this is it. So this body, any kind of activities is going to go for this body, whatever can happen. So is, what it, is, that is it going to like, um, improve your life in certain ways though? Or let's say you had a drinking problem or you were an impatient person or you are prone to anger or you, you, know, you argued with people and so on. Is that stuff going to change, do you think? As far as the arguing, you see, like, let's say, <clears throat> again, if you see as yourself as a character, definitely you argue. But if you see the big picture, mm -hmm. where is the argument? You know that the essence. You know is, that. The, what is the big picture go perspective going to? I mean, does, does, argument, does argumentativeness or impatience or addictions and all that, do those arise from, from being confined as merely an individual? And when the, to the, the totality is realized, do those tendencies and behaviors naturally drop off? Um, <clears throat> I don't have those kind of, uh, I never had those type of uh, habits like drinking and smoking and that, that's why I cannot relate to that. Honestly, mm -hmm. I cannot give you any answer for that. But in here, there is a transformation happen, mm -hmm. transformed. If somebody says, I know that I am awareness, this is that, 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 and then they think and behave the same exact way as before, where is the transformation? Well, like, for instance, did your husband notice a change in your absolutely, behavior? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. He does. What did he say? Family. Well, he, you know, the way we used to interact was the, mm -hmm. like a people, characters. Yeah. But when, when he's sitting next to me, his character melts down. Mm -hmm. Complete. Yeah, I mean, he falls into my lap. He never sit too close to me. He was always sitting in the other side of the room. <laughs> and, and now he comes in here and he puts his head on my lap. Huh. Never happened before. Never wow. happened before. 
ever, mm. ever. That's not his style. And then he melts, he melts. And then the relation, there is no relationship anymore. Mm. There is no two people, boop, 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 like that. It's not going to be like that. It's, it's just this. Mm -hmm. This is living. And yes, of course, as two bodies, you know, mm -hmm. like this, two bodies, like that. But I, I know. I know what is going on behind that. So there is no, I'm not going to argue with him if he's not interested in this path. I just have a compassion, love and compassion. And mm -hmm. this is how he wants to be. He, he's not, he likes to listen to his music and his spirituality is not his thing. Let's be it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go convert him. There is not, but, that's not my but job. But it sounds, it sounds like your realization really enhanced your relationship though. Absolutely, Eric. There is no doubt in my mind it, with, with, with the children, with other people, any interaction that I have, the truth is, is, is absolutely up and running. I see that. I mm -hmm. see myself in, in the picture. You see, this is how you see yourself. Like you're talking to a plumber, you see yourself as like this. This is, mm -hmm. this is how you see it. So you don't see yourself as a person talking to a person, as, as totality is talking, like mm -hmm. way above that. So your interaction is just pure love, pure love. You talk. You're looking at his face. You interact, and he sees your love. Mm. You bring water for him. You you interact. You just you know that's the interaction you have with people. Absolutely. I'm I go for a walk. I interact with people. I see. I say hello. But the hello is not just a superficial. It's just very very deep. Look in the eyes. I see you as me. You are. This is it. You are in me right now. You're walking in me. That, that's how I see people right now. So how can you not be transformed? Mm. As totality, everything is you. That's great. Um, I think we've kind of covered this, but we'll see if you have a few words to say. How do you feel about a murderer or a child abuser or in general the destructive act of others? Right. After, uh, after after liberation, you were saying earlier that you know from the totality's perspective, you know this finger happens to be a murderer. <laughs> this yes. finger, and, and, you know. and it's okay and compassion and love yeah. and compa compassion arises because this doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know who he is. He thinks that he is this finger, so he thinks that you are in someone against him. He has a fight with you, and then he decides to murder, and that is the mental image that he's drawing to. So that is. That, that's be answered already this is going to be absolute compassion absolute absolute compassion because the ignorance is in charge right now right. he's ignorant mm -hmm. that's what it is yeah okay good um here's a here's a question i was listening to some spiritual teacher and he was mentioning that there is nobody sitting on the these chairs there is no there's no doer uh -huh. uh, so do i have a will a free will uh -huh. or not okay well you know that whoever that teacher is, you know, people go and listen to all these things in these uh, lectures and stuff. That teacher is talking the truth because mm -hmm. as you see in the totality when you're looking, there is nobody here really as individuals as, as, because there's no characters in these fingers. All he sees is the totality. So uh, he's right. There is nobody as an individual self, like a separate self, sitting on those chairs. But their bodies are sitting in the chairs, definitely. Like fingers are there, but in the in, tota in the big picture, he sees the big picture. So he sees only the source, mm -hmm. but and not individuals. That's what he's talking about. And there is no any doer, correct? Because who is the doer really? Ultimately, ultimately, the source is the doer, isn't it? And even as a murderer, as a murderer, who is really ultimately did the murder? The source, but the source is in coma. The source that it doesn't know who he is. Right. Okay. So therefore, this that's why Jesus says something beautiful. He says, hate the sin, not the sinner. Mm -hmm. Isn't that so? Hate the action. The action is, yes, destructive. But who is really ultimately the sinner? This is not even a sinner. The, who, the, who, the source is behind that. You see it for a fact. So you're not going to judge that. There is no judgment here. I hope that I answered that question. So no, it is the source is doing this. So yes, you are not a doer. You as a character is talking about. You mm -hmm. as a character are not a doer. But there is a doer, there is a doing happening in this totality. Just like 
I am moving my fingers, see? Um, the fingers are not doing by themselves. I am doing that. There's a source behind that. Okay? That's, this is the analogy. Just remember the analogy. The source is doing that. The last part of that question, which I didn't read, was I am confused. And I think the, the reason that people sometimes get confused is teachers speak from their perspective, yes. um, uh, which is totality. Or maybe it's in some cases it might just be an understanding of totality and not the actual living of it. But it, presuming it's, it's the living of it, they speak from that. And people uh, and they describe a state of no no sense, no sense of doership, no free will, and so on. Right. But then people are listening, and they feel like they do have a sense of doership. They do right. seem to have free will, and so they get confused because there's a there's a, a disparity between the level that is being spoken and the level that is being experienced or lived. Right, um, right. Which is probably why it says in the Gita that the wise should not delude the ignorant by speaking of the non-involved nature of the self. They should just, yes. you know, speak yes. speak to the level of consciousness. Of yes, the <laughs> exactly, because they know. That's why Rumi says, "What I say, in it, I come to your level, and I." Speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't talk from up here. He right. comes down to your level, but he's talking, so you understand. I would never say that there is no doer. That doesn't help you. That's not right. going to awake you. Believe me, it's not going to help you. If you want to use that as a shortcut, oh, let's see if there's no. I get emails. Oh, I know that there is no me here. I know there is no the. But <laughs> no, you don't know it. You are trying to impose that upon yourself, and that's how the mind does. That's how this character does. Tries to act as if, as if there is nobody there, and it tricks you. So you're gonna get into this trap, and you're gonna stay there, and you don't know how to get yourself out of it, out of it, unless you know the right way of doing that. And the right way was coming, mm. coming. In. That for that is my suggestion. It might be so many different ways, but the way the thing that it works here was absolute silence. Go to the silence. Just use the right method that they have been doing for many, many years, for thousands of years people are practicing that, not mm -hmm. the shortcuts. Yes, right. once in a while, once in a while, the shortcuts work. You sit down, in front, if you're ready to hear something, yes, it triggers. But the majority of us, majority of human beings, beings, need to go into that silence because that silence is talking to you. It's like a highway. You just put, into, put yourself in the highway and just go. Don't go to these little side roads that people taking you and telling you this is my experience. You, their experience is their experience. You may never have that experience. Like for example, last time I talked about Kundalini awakening here. And now, but I am telling you everybody, you don't have to have any of those experiences in order to recognize who you are. Okay, please listen. You don't have to have that. Now that I see the big picture, those experiences just for fun for it happens in some body minds it doesn't happen in some others so there is nothing has to happen nothing esoteric has to happen in you nothing no no firework nothing has to happen in order for you to recognize what is true here what never come and goes what is ultimate and 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 first of all recognize it then fall in love with it that's the important thing. Fall in love with who you are at the present. And then once that happens, living is so simple. You don't have to think about how I'm going to live this. If this is one breath at a time. It comes out by itself effortlessly. Yeah, like, like breathing. Yes. Okay, here's another question. Someone says, I was with a spiritual teacher, and she helped me overcome my fear by feeling it thoroughly and directly. At the moment, it seemed... The feeling was gone, but after a few days, the same level of fear came back again. How can, yes, you, help, how can you help me? Right. It's, that's a very good question. Just like this. Like, I am this character, like with this mind, and mm -hmm. sitting next to this guru, right? He, mm -hmm. He's all present and everything. Yes, when you're sitting next to the guru and you say, oh, I feel so inadequate. And she says, okay, look into that, and I want you to feel it. Feel this inadequacy. So this person starts doing that. This person now, character... Once is you, you come into the presence, okay, that character, that ego character drops in the presence. So it will feel absolutely that, the, that emotion, that emotion comes up and it dissolves in the presence of her own presence and that guru. Okay? Mm -hmm. So in that moment, yes, it feels, oh, 
thank God, this was just nothing. Oh, thank you, God. Oh, this is so good. Okay? You feel so good. Your heart, heart palpitates and you give a hug and everything. Fine. You walk away from that. Two days later, the character is still there. The character didn't go anywhere. Yes, you overcome that feeling of fear and everything that it arose at the moment, but the character didn't go anywhere. So she taught you a technique. Anytime you have this, fe- you know, this feeling of fear, or in, just sit down and look, t- just directly experience that. Yes, you can do that for the rest of your life. If that's, that's the kind of thing you want, the technique, how I'm going to stop the mind. Okay, I take a breath. Oh, a few seconds, I'm going to stop. Oh, thank God, this is so good. I feel so good. So that's my technique. So, yes, if you want to, if that is resonate with your heart, Go ahead and do that. Use all these techniques to overcome all these feelings. But this path is not about that. This path is not about technique. It's about who you are. Once you find out who you are, this feeling of inadequacy, this not feeling good and, you know, not, you know, all these fears and the future and this, this all drops. I promise you. Because but these feelings it belongs to the character who thinks that I am this separate little miserable me. Once that miserable me drops, you will notice that this is living. And this is not, <laughs> this is the totality. But as, we, as we've been saying, though, the totality is lived by virtue of this instrument, you see. Yes. Yes. And, and sometimes the instruments are kind of rusty. In other words, there's, you know, some people have a lot of emotional baggage, a lot of rep- repressed you know traumas and so on and so forth and even and so you know maybe maybe some of that load has to be lightened up yes yes that's uh, so, what some t- some spiritual teachers even advocate going and doing some therapy or something just to kind of work out some of this baggage that um, Ab- yes, is making Ab- it yeah you know, it's blocking the the possibility of this instrument being the uh, reflector of totality Absolutely, I agree, 100%. If you have all these baggages and uh, pain and suffering and all these things is built up in here, you cannot even close your ma- eyes for two seconds and you cannot even be for right. a few minutes. It of starts course, to bubble up. Exactly, yeah. bubble up. Definitely go for all those therapies. And I, I, say, I say to a lot of people that you really need to go for a therapy for, before even you come to this path. I mm-hmm. say that. And I okay. noticed that that level of intense you know, emotions and feelings and a lot of mental activities. I see the paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of writing. That shows, that shows it's a lot going on in this mind. Mm. This character has a lot of things in mind. You need to just go and, yes, do all those therapies. But that is not the ultimate awakening. So your job is, you're kind of a finisher. Your job is to deal with that ultimate awakening and and not necessarily to deal with all these things. No, because I know the root. The root of your, this inadequacy is because you don't know who you are. That's now, do you feel like you could go into a mental hospital and, and possibly deal with somebody there and, and somehow get them? Or do you feel that it would be way premature for anyone like that and they've really got to work through a bunch of stuff before even talking to you? I cannot answer. That. I don't know what comes out of me right now. If yeah. I have to be in that situation. You see, I cannot project something in the future, what's going, how I'm going to do this. But in your if experience, it, has, it really hasn't been your specialty to deal with um, people who are deeply troubled. It's more like people who have kind of done their homework. Right. Well, I, I'm not a psychiatrist. Right. I'm not a psychologist. I don't claim, I don't claim anything. I'm nothing. <laughs> From this nothingness, I don't know what comes out of it. All I know is that when I, when I read the email, let's say they send me an email, I read it. When this person, I see this been struggling, has been there for a long time, so many years of, uh, you know, going to the India, coming back and see this, this guru and that guru, doing all these yogas, meditation. This individual, and, and I see desperate. You have to be desperate in this Yeah. yeah. So Not the, just, the... just I want to get this information, but I'm going to steal this spear finger. Uh, right. Give me some information. No. This path is not, that's why I'm saying it needs a courage. You need, you need to be courageous to jump into what you see as an ultimate truth and claim it. You, most of the people, they see it. They're absolutely, they see the truth. But they want to dance around constantly, just like a tail chasing again, right? Around that. They, wanna, they don't want to face it because facing it is like death. Hmm. It's like a suicide. I just said that. That's why Rumi says, Bemirid, bemirid, darin esh, bemirid. 
در این عشق شمردید همه روح پذیرید He says die die into this love once you die into this love once and for all you will be resurrected hmm. so that's what he's talking that's that's what he's talking about beautiful but it, because this is like death death to the character death to this belief just this little tiny knot there is this one knot in here that has to be untied but you know what the people do they go outside and untie every little knot <laughs> except this <laughs> yeah. they know everything they know everything about everything oh the stock market is this and the gold value is that they know everything every the science and all scientific books they know but then once you come to themselves they don't know that mm. oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> you know which is good which is good you this is what you want this is what I the play is fine that's that's how it is but this path is not just being oh facing my feelings oh this is my pain. that is not how it is once you know who you are these feelings are gone you're not gonna have fear for heaven's sake never ever fear of what the ultimate fear was death which you you already died <laughs> you already died <laughs> how many times you die that's why we said jesus on the, on the on the cross what does that mean you die and then you resurrect death has to be there though you cannot resurrect without dying dying is the part of it hmm. this part is not easy for everyone so that is why i'm saying ultimately is the truth besides exactly what i'm going to do in here yeah <laughs> <laughs> When the time is ripe. Okay. Yes. Some some teacher gave me the practice of just being a watcher. I tried it for about two weeks and it did not work, so I dropped it. Is this yeah. a good practice? Right. I'm sure you can answer that, Eric, by now. Uh, watcher of what? Who's watching now? Right. The, the the ego. You see, the character in this body, in the in the finger, is watching the other character as two. As this is duality already to begin with. So if I practice to be watcher, I am reinforcing what duality. Because there's a character is watching now, watching everything as separate. Everything is separate from me. This is how it looks. Mm -hmm. See, this I am separate. But the watcher, the real observer that we're talking about, is not watching from here, not from from the finger. Is watching from totality. the totality. So yeah. it, your uh, true watching is rising above this. So that's why that watching is not working. That watching because the the, the character is watching as a person. Yeah. Okay, so if you reinforce that, it's not going to work. I, I mean, as you see, I get that all the time. I practice this to be just observer. To, to, that observer that you are is an ego observing, is a character observing, not totality observing. Yeah, it's, a, it's an attempt by the ego to mimic uh, uh, something that sounds like, you know, they have a conceptual understanding of this state. You cannot fake this. Right, right. And, and there is a state at which, you know, there, there's this witnessing state, which some people naturally live for a while, where there seems to be a natural detachment yeah, from everything, yeah, and, we, and I am that, you know, and, and everything is detached from me. But even that's not something you do. It's just something which may be that way for a while. It opens up. The eye, inner eye opens up. Inner yeah, eye yeah. is a symbolic. There's no eye in it. It's not a practice. That, that, no, 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 no. It's not a practice. This part is not a practice. This part was not practice for me. Practice right. for me was just curving down, going inside. Mm -hmm. And I just want to know what's going on with me. Yeah. Because I have so many things going on. That is the practice part. And, and recognition of the truth. It's recognition. There, mm -hmm. is the, there was a recognition that there is something here as, as existence. Okay? That happened. But beside, beyond that, the rest of it, this sense of duality, I don't know how this dropped. The duality vision drops yeah. all of a sudden. And, and you see this oneness. And that is what I am. And, and oneness it, is not a practice either. It's not like you're walking around, I am oneness, I am oneness. No. You know, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> you cannot fake. This is the only thing you cannot fake it. And right. when the people are talking, you can tell. Hmm. You can tell. Is this being is talking from here or is talking from the experience? Absolutely, the energy shows. People can definitely can see it. Okay? You cannot, this is not something that you can fake. Right. Because you are that. You are claim, you are already 
that, you claim that as your identity. So you are that. You are it. So you're, you're talking from it. So again, for example, if somebody, and I'm not pass any judgment right now here. Oh, you are this. And even my close family, my daughter says something. Is that phasing me? She defines me as this and that. No, <laughs> no, I know who I am. I am not the role. I know that for sure. I am this. So no matter who is say what, I get nice emails and sometimes whatever they comments. Either way, it doesn't matter because I know who I am. Right. So as as this, this I don't even know who this is. This cannot be described. This is a mystery. So I am just living the mystery that it is, but I cannot describe it. This is always stays as unknown. I yeah. am always unknown. And you know, this thing about not describing it, that's not so mysterious either. I mean, try describing the color red. Yes. You know, what yes. can you say about it? You yes. know, it's just like everybody knows what red is unless they're colorblind, yes. but, but how can you describe it? It's just one exactly. of the, it's something that can't be put into words. Exactly. Or you can, like, say if someone, someone blinds right now, sitting, always blind, sitting mm -hmm. here, and you try to describe the color red to that blind person. Who's never seen it. Never seen it. Yeah. That's how and it is. And That's even if they, is. even if they're not blind, I mean, there's certain things, you know, I mean, this is sort of purple. How do we describe purple? Well, it's a little bit like red, but what is yes, red? <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. undescribable, but yet, yet. Certain things just don't most, fit into words. Yes, and, but yet it's more obvious thing is, it, it is here. Yeah. It's the most obvious, permanent yes. existence forever, self-illuminating, self-loving, mm -hmm. peaceful existence that there is. That's all we can say about it, but you cannot describe this. This cannot be described ever. Right. Please do not, because my mind was originally when I this, this discovery was happening, was, was just so into trying to describe this to other people, like my husband, how this thing is, how this thing is. And then this drops, this drops. I know at the point I noticed that this cannot be described but you can be it. And all those practices stops, you know, practice to be unconditional love. This character is practicing all that. I want to be unconditional love. I, I, I want to be helping other people. I, want to, I don't want to judge. These practices are all dropped because you are automatically, you see yourself as the source. Mm -hmm. So the source is not judgmental like that. It means, I see the malfunctions. Don't get me wrong. If somebody is acting, you know, like a selfish being, I see that, but I, there is no blame in there. Mm -hmm. That's that for sure, because I know where this person is coming from. This ignorance is doing it. Ignorance is right here, right now. So yeah. that is the vision. I just want to see people see, I want to see this analogy is helping people to see the big picture. Mm -hmm. and, and all these questions, uh, uh, if it comes from the source, you see how beautiful it comes just from the source we're talking, not from the men here, from here. So I remember I have to be so, you know, co compassionate, this and that. No, but in action, you act like a, like a character when it comes into the action, you know? When it comes to the action, all of a sudden the character, because the character is there, it functions as a character. But when your identity has shifted to this emptiness, to this existence that it is, everything arises from this. And, and two things made very powerful comes here. Absolute love and intimacy. And secondly, compassion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's how it is. Good. Um, okay. My heart knows it is the truth, but due to the hardcore non-dual teachings, I always get confused on whether a practice leads to realization. If I don't mm -hmm. exist... Will these practices reinforce the I or melt it? Okay. The la one more sentence here in, in this question. The last four years I have stopped searching and meditating. Now I feel I am at peace, but I know I have not realized the truth and would See? love to. <laughs> That's what it is. See, we, we answered that pretty much, right? We did so, earlier. Yeah, you know, yes, the character starts as a who am I, mm -hmm. okay, who am I? And then it curves down, of course, but then that practice is not a practice of, how can I say, um, you know, this naturally this happens, Rick. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, this naturally, I, t I curved inside, I, I went inside, and this happens as very natural thing. It's not a doing thing. 
No, like it, it happened here. naturally, but it, it didn't happens. reinforce the sense of I either. No, I mean, no, just some no, teachers that's... say that you shouldn't do any sort of practice because it's going to reinforce the sense of an I or, or a practicer, to which I respond, well, then you shouldn't eat because it's going to reinforce the sense of an eater. <laughs> 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 exactly, exactly. So no, I, I don't think that reinforces, honestly. That's the answer. Yeah. Some, sure maybe some practices do, but what yeah. you were doing doesn't. If it's natural, if it's spontaneous, if it's effortless, it shouldn't reinforce, I think. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Um, another question. I have read so many books, attended many satsangs, have done so many different yogas and meditation practices for many years. However, I am still not free. How can I start over? <laughs> All the time I get that. Well, this is very simple. I just want to give you not a prescription again, okay? Mm -hmm. The first and foremost, you know, there are so, you know, when we are in this path, there's so many questions, nonsense questions going on in your head. Who, like, I mean, what, what is my purpose? What is going on? What is this whole life is all about? You, those, those questions are good and dandy, but the, there's one solid gold question that needs to be in the core of your being. The moment you be identified with this finger, that question is, who am I? Mm -hmm. Believe me, that is your co core question. Don't go around other, you know, nonsense questions, try to get answers for those. That's my first and foremost thing to tell you. When you close your eyes as a being, just be, and, and, and have this core question always in your, in your heart, who am I, really? Who am I? I mean, that, not that I want to be enlightened. As a kid, I want to be enlightened. I want to know. Not, that's not like that. It's just who am I? Who am I? This, this question has to be very authentic coming from the depth of your being. And when you go to the silence, that is that question in, the, in behind, in behind this whole scene always. And that once you go into that silence, as I mentioned, by and by, the silence is not a silence. This silence is pointing towards who you are, really. That silence is talking to you, okay? Without any esoteric experience, it's talking to you. So you recognize the truth when you go within. And when you recognize that the, the ego, that character, when it sees that, if it's ready enough, if this character is ready, is desperate enough, it has been in this path enough would recognize that as an ultimate truth hmm. and not only recognize that but it's gonna merge into that hmm. it jumps into that and when I say jump that's symbolic again that there is no character that idea of you again it would say yes to this hmm. yes to this and that's the that's the end of that so shortcuts, if you want to get shortcuts, like this is not a spiritual pills you can somebody can give you and you swallow and you get you know enlightened. It doesn't work like that. Do not waste your time. Just I get people they keep going to this teacher to that teacher to that teacher. Who is doing that? This character is doing that. Oh, this teacher doesn't resonate with me. Let me go to the other one. Who who is doing that? This is the character wants to dance around and taste every single teacher who they're all saying the same thing, aren't they? <laughs> Basically. Yeah, basically. But, you know, yes, there are some teachers resonate with you. If this resonates, you stay there. Not to jump from this person to another, mm -hmm. you know, because the, the, that confuses you again. That puts you into another way of thinking because the mind likes that. Don't you see? The mind likes that kind of a trick. Oh, this person, okay, I heard all about this one. Let's go to the other one. Let's go to the other one. That is not the way to be. That's not going to help you. Just, yeah, in, in India, they say they have this analogy, it's better to dig one well that's 100 feet deep than 10 wells that are 10 feet deep, you know? Excellent, excellent, <laughs> enough. That's, that's it, you know? So be honest. And, and, and then this, the last jump is, as I said, is important, you know? So what I do usually with coaching, I see, I, we go down to the deep down and people can see the truth for themselves and they claim it. But from that point on, the, the ego part of it, by and by sometimes, through every experience, that ego would drop, that character would drop into the truth as truth. You know, sometimes that's going to happen. So you're not going to go discouraged once you recognize. I see people awaken fully, fully awaken. I see them, they're seeing the truth, they're, they're talking to me. But then a week later, he comes back, I talk to him on the phone. 
oh, my mother was this and my brother was that. And then it goes back to the story and the character. Mm. The character wants to go back again to this, again, me and my story. That mm. happens a lot. So that character has to be so ready, so mature, as I said, mature to once it's recognized, it attention automatically comes back home. Doesn't go back to the world anymore. Okay? That's very important. That is the maturity. Mm. That is a mature character who had enough, you know, and once he sees that diamond, he says yes to that. Well, that's kind of what we were talking about in some of those earlier questions is can you, you know, realize the truth and then lose it again, you know? So like you're saying, you you can see it and then get caught, caught up back in the story. No, once you see, once you see the awareness, the existence in here, there's a mm-hmm. still duality. I see. Don't forget. You are so you can so so you gl- glimpse it from afar, then you can lose the glimpse. Yes, but if, if you, yes. when you become that, then you can ever not yes. become once that. Once your, 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 your vision shifted, once you're out of this picture, like you are totally, you are not this mm-hmm. finger, you are this totality. Once right. the vision changes, yeah. there is no way you lose yourself. Absolutely no way. You're not going to lose yourself. You're not going to practice to be yourself. You don't want to do... You, there's no search anymore. You're not going to have to read anymore about yourself. You're done. You live yourself. You, you dance yourself. You smile yourself. You know, that's what's, that's what's going to happen. So this next question kind of relates to what you were just saying. Um, how do I know that the truth of my nature is the ultimate truth? Seems like people can have a glimpse and they think, oh, this is truth, but is it the ultimate truth? Yes, but because the, the, the mature, that comes to the maturity of the ego again. If mm-hmm. the character is not mature enough, it, although it sees that, although it sees that as the truth, but it's not going to accept that. It say, okay, no, that's, I don't think so. So what? I'm going to go back and search more. Mm-hmm. See, that ego character has to be mature enough. Once it sees the truth, it would recognize. That's why this coaching, uh, my coaching offered, when I offered this coaching, so that I go step by step coaching people to, so that they see the truth. And once they are there, I'm going to be there with them so that they can see that as an ultimate. I'm not going to let their ego run away. You know, that just be, be, be stay there together. I want them to have the conviction. Yes, that's me. Yes, that's what I am. That is what I am. That is what I am. They repeat that. And once you know, so that there is a conviction in there. But if you if you just do it on your own, the way this happened here to me, it was a long path because nobody was helping me. I didn't have any help. That's why I'm offering this free help coaching to people. This is not a teaching. I'm not putting more information to your head to have more information. You don't have enough information. Some of the people had a lot of information here, which I I rather you didn't have any of that. You know, if you have all this. You can't see this. You can't see this at all. You you hardly can feel it. Can't see so, the forest for the trees, they say. Yes, there's too much <laughs> junk in here, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, that that's the coaching, and it's just like somebody's trying to give birth, and there's a like midwife sitting right next to this person, and helping coaching. But the real giving birth is yours. Mm-hmm. I cannot give birth for you. Okay, mm-hmm. that's. That's how it is. Coaching is not teaching. This is not, you are already that. What can I teach you? That's why I don't have classes. What can I teach? I mean, see, this, this finger. Like, if, if you know you are the totality, you see everybody else as totality already. <laughs> but then how can I teach you to be totality? You are already it. Yeah. So that, that's what, to me, teaching is just wasting, wasting time for me, for, for here. I, I don't think that's needed. I cannot help just bring, giving more information to your head, adding to, to my experiences, talk about my experience. That doesn't help you. What I want, I don't want to waste your time, and I don't want to waste my time. My time is very precious. So I spend this time for you if you are ready for this totally and seriously. Ultimately, you know that this is, this is it. You're going to die for this truth. You are ready to die for that. That's that. Now, Hafez says, everyone, com- everyone com- who comes to this world has a role of demolition. Hmm. That's, what the, what, that's what your role is. Demolition of the character. Demolition. But it's not that you're trying to do that. You're just attacking that. No, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about every being 
is doing that unconsciously. Unconsciously, they're doing that. Okay, you, they construct and they destruct. You see, this this board is teaching you something good happened, bad happened, good happened. You lose some, gain some. Every you know peak and valley is is teaching you who you are. It's taught, giving you the message. Every experience each each of these fingers are gonna have, which are so different, it's gonna bring them back to the source. It's calling them back. But some of them they are ready to come back and jump while they are in this body while they are in this body that's the beauty of it heaven on earth that's what they're talking about heaven is here heaven is not something that you die and go to heaven that's not how I see it anymore that word and this word both of them merges to this to this that's what you are and that is the ultimate that's the ultimate truth okay we're almost at the end of our questions um, and uh you know, you hear a lot of people these days saying, oh, I awakened, I had an awakening, and so-and-so was awakened, and so on and so forth. Uh, so here's a question that kind of relates to that. I have, I have been awakened. However, yeah. the mind, old me, is still there. How can I be one with the truth? And I, I just would add to that, you know, it seems to me that there are many stages of awakening but yes. and, and many flavors of it, but all these stages and flavors of awakening are not necessarily liberation and yes. the, and but are often mistaken as liberation absolutely liberation means i see oneness right i see me as my one just me as this this is me and everything is within me and everything happens in me not to me anymore right see in as a finger everything is happening to me but as totality everything happening in me that's the vision the, the ultimate freedom is when you feel the your true essence and and you know it for sure that is what you are mm -hmm. seeing it and declaring it loving it and living it mm -hmm. that's that's the ultimate thing it comes out of me right now so that's what it is Good. So I just want to say something beautiful just came to me. Mm -hmm. Rumi says that they ask him, what is your path? He says, راه ما عشق است و مردن اگر می توانی بمیری بیا وگر نبرو. He answers, our path is the path of love and death. If you can die, come. Otherwise, go. <laughs> Nice. Simple as that. This yeah. is, that's that simple as that. <clears throat> so the last three questions could actually be lumped into one question. There are questions about what your teaching is, and you're, you're referring to a retreat here, like you offer some sort of ultimate truth retreat. Okay. And, uh, and, and there's a question about whether there's a fee for that. So are you going, do you teach a retreat in residence? Like do people come to Long Island and come to a retreat? Or are you just talking about over Skype? And explain all that. Yes, sure. The retreat, it, it can be so many ways. Like I have people from, let's say, they, uh, from all over the world they're calling me, from Dubai, from UK. If they're far away and I, I see them ready, we do this through a Skype. So mm -hmm. that's a Skype interaction and phone calls and everything and emails and stuff. Mm -hmm. But if they're local, definitely I invite them to be local, come in here. And I, yes, absolutely, I interact them individually. One do they to just one. come to your house or do you sometimes yes. set up a little thing at a retreat center and everybody comes there and so on? It's, it's very intimate. It's one-to-one -one in my home. Okay. And we, we do going to walking meditation. We come sit down together, interact, and, and that's what's happened. That's what's mm -hmm. going to happen. And that's what it is. And the, the, re, the interaction over the Skype, um, I have done it many many times with people then they know they know me very well <laughs> so I have very good friends right now but um, as I mentioned first of all I there is no fee here because right now as this totality I don't need anything I don't need your money or you give me something there is no character here who wants to show you the way like somebody is lost they, they, they lost their way I would just stand there okay in order for me to show which way to go you have to give me this much money so I can show you the direction <laughs> that's to me that's how it doesn't resonate with me anymore so yeah. I am helping myself there is only one 
this is only oneness. So that my, me as, as being is in two different bodies, and so therefore I am helping that other body to come up with this to this level. So that is the, my service towards the humanity and is for free. But what I'm asking to the people, because the ego, because the character, when, when it sees the free thing, it thinks that there is no value into that. Especially when you see the ultimate truth, you think there is no value for that. So what I'm asking people to do is just, before I start this walking meditation with you and we go through all this process, I'm going to ask you to give any donation that you want to your favorite charity including Buddha at the gas pump, including this, because this, this is the way you would get to know who I am and, and interacting with me. Rick is kind enough to accommodate this for you. And so therefore, I would highly recommend if you can possibly just make any donation to this site that you, you found me and the, any kind of a charities that you like, the highest is the better because the highest you pay, the more value you see this is that's what it is that's how it is so that is the way I deal with it and and that's absolutely I spend every time that you need one step at a time at a time we go and I'm there with you, for you to the very very last step to the ultimate until you see that okay I see people right now I'm interacting people from Dubai right now I mean all of the United States a lot of people Canada you know UK a lot of people in UK so Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you, Ellie. Um, yeah. As far as Buddha's gas pump is concerned, there's a um, couple of donate buttons on the upper right-hand side of the website, the mm -hmm. website being batgap.com, and um, one of them is for a one-time donation. The other is for like a subscription thing where it sends a certain amount every month automatically from your PayPal account. And um, if a person tries to do that and gets stuck, you know, I've had a couple of people say they couldn't figure out PayPal and, and they've ended up sending a check. Um, so they could email me and I could give them my address if they want to do that. And all the, any money that's you know, collected as donation has been used so far for like, you know, equipment and uh, hosting fees. And I, I attended the Science and Non-Duality Conference out in California last fall. I'm going to go again this fall. And I went on a, a retreat uh, with Sharon Landreth down in Missouri. Um, a few weeks ago, and so it's used for something that stuff that's directly related to, to this. Um. Very good. Yeah. Um, so then, um, Rick, there's one last thing I want to say. Mm -hmm. Just came to me again from Rumi. I want to end I this. I like uh, these Rumi quotes. Rumi. Oh my God! It's, be it's beautiful to hear you speaking the yes. Farsi. Yeah, he says, "Hasil umram se sukhan bish nist, kham budam, pochte shodam sukhtam." He says, my whole life is about only three things. I was unripened, I was ripened, then I burned out. Mm. He's talking about, again, the character. Start mm. from unripened, then I will be ripened, then I will die. Mm. That's the end of that. So what I'm saying to everyone, my final word, find who you are as an ultimate truth. L love it. You fall in love with it. Because that's the only thing that is always here, is ultimate, and is always eternal. You fall in love with the eternal. Once you do that, living it is just is going to be such joy because every breath is a celebration of you as an ultimate truth. Using this body to, to experience this absolute beauty. That's great. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. It's very enjoyable. Um, all right. Let's make a couple of quick concluding remarks. Um, we, you've been listening to an interview with Ellie Rustar. Ellie happens to live on Long Island, in, which is outside New York City, but um, she communicates with people all over the world with email and Skype. And um, if you'd like to get in touch with Ellie, go to batgap.com and from there you'll see a link to her website um, and there's a contact form or contact information on the website. Um, also at batgap.com you will see all the other interviews I've done, about 120 of them so far. Um, they're all archived there and um, you can 
subscribe to a little email notification thing so that when, every time I post a new interview, you'll get an email about once a week. Uh, also, if you're just listening to this on YouTube, you, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, and YouTube will notify you when I post a new interview. Um, also, you'll see on BatGap a, uh, a link to an iTunes podcast so that you can listen to these in audio on your iPod if you wish. Okay. So those are the practical points. Uh, thanks again, Ellie. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Peace yeah. be with you. Peace be with you. And um, thanks to those who have been listening or watching. And we will see you next week. Mm -hmm.